Pants are notoriously difficult to fit. This is considered common knowledge in the garment sewing community and has most likely caused many of you not to even bother trying to sew pants. Even I have avoided making pants for fear of spending countless hours trying to get the fit just right. So let's see if we can tackle this difficult subject matter together. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Pattern Studio. In last week's video, I gave you some basic information and a few resources to get you started with fitting pants. This week, I wanted to start with a solution to a fitting issue that I've often seen with my private clients, the tummy adjustment. But before we get to that, there are a few things that you need to confirm before you start the fitting process for this fitting issue. First things first, make sure that you have your balance lines marked on your garment. You'll need them to assess the fit. Second, make sure that you've chosen the correct pattern size. There is really no use to fitting a garment that is too small. Third, use the fitting order that I've taught you throughout the Perfect Fit Guide. Length first, contour second, and width or circumference last. Now this tutorial is solving for a contour issue, so make sure that you've addressed any length issues before you solve for this particular fitting issue. Now one last note, I've created a scale block pattern for pants that you can download for free. I'll leave the link below so that you can print them out and follow along with the pattern adjustments I'll be showing you throughout this video series. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go over how you'll know if you need this adjustment, how to assess the volume you need to add, and the pattern adjustment that will correct for this fit issue. Okay, so let's start with deciding whether you need a tummy adjustment or not. We're gonna use Margie here as an example, and you can see she's definitely having a little bit of problems with her pant fitting. She can't even close her center front opening here. Now, just to caution, this does not always mean that you need a tummy adjustment. You also have to consider whether you've chosen the correct pattern size. So make sure that you've chosen your pattern size based on the largest circumference that you found on your lower torso. So your abdomen measurement may have been larger than your hip. You will use your abdomen measurement for the um, choosing your size from a pattern, okay? So use the largest circumference that you come up with when you measure your lower torso in place of the hip measurement to choose your pattern size. Okay, so Margie here can't close the front of her pants and you can actually see if I put her in profile here that she does have quite a prominent tummy in comparison what she has at her back here. So this is another thing that you can sort of take a look at. Just viewing yourself in a mirror will tell you where your me the bulk of your measurement actually lies. So in this terms of circumference here, the largest percentage of the circumference measurement is actually going to be at the front of the body. So you know you're going to need to accommodate that with whatever pattern adjustment that you make. So let's look at some other clues to know if you're going to need this tummy adjustment. So most likely what you'll find if you have a prominent tummy is that you'll end up sort of getting some cupping here under the belly. And you'll also find that you'll feel like you have lots of excess fabric here at the front crotch. Now, if you were smart enough to put your horizontal and vertical balance lines on your, on your sample, you'll also notice a few other things. The waistline here is probably going to be sitting lower than your natural waistline. How do you find your natural waistline? You're gonna put a piece of elastic around your waist, give yourself a little wiggle and make sure that the uh, elastic actually settles at your natural waist. It will feel high, don't be concerned, you can always lower the waistlines after. But this is what you'll notice, is the pant does not actually meet your natural waistline. You also may find that your horizontal balance lines are sort of dipping down at center front. So they're coming into a slight V shape. This always indicates that you need more length in your front rise if that's happening. So make sure you kind of address that. There's also another clue if you look at your side seam. The side seam, as you know, should be hanging perpendicular to and 
perpendicular to the floor. So what this means is it will appear to be straight up and down on the body. Now if you need a tummy adjustment, what you're going to find is that side seam is going to tilt toward the front as your tummy borrows fabric from your back. So it's going to pull your side seam toward the front. So those are the clues that you have to know if you're going to possibly need this tummy adjustment. Now the next step is to determine how much of an adjustment you need to make and that's pretty easy to determine at least to guess anyway. So what I'd like you to do is undo your center front opening and I'd like you to sort of just let your pants relax toward the back and allow the front to open. You want to line up your side seam line so that it appears to be hanging perpendicular to the floor. This is automatically going to open the center front opening and there's going to be a gap at center front. Now you're going to take a measurement from seam line to seam line at center front to determine how much you need to add in the width. So you're going to measure the opening or the gap at the high hip line or the most prominent level of the tummy and divide that by two. And you're going to divide that in half simply because we're only going to make a pattern adjustment to half of the front pattern. Okay, so you're going to record that number. The other measurement that you can take to determine how much extra length you need in your front rise is this distance here. This distance from the waistline of the pant to the waistline of your natural position on your body. This is going to be the extra length you need to add to your pattern in order to accommodate the prominence of your particular tummy. So those are the measurements you're going to take and you're going to record them and then now we're going to move on to showing you how to make the pattern adjustment that will accommodate a more prominent tummy. Now let's get started with what the final pattern adjustment looks like. So it's a sort of sneak peek of what the adjustment's going to look like when it's done here. And here it is. And you can see here that the front is adjusted but the back is not. And you can see that the front in terms of the pattern adjustment, you are gaining more width over the front pattern as well as more length. So this is what I talked about in the previous section of the video where if you have a prominent tummy, you definitely need more length and width to travel over the mass that you have. Okay, so the only pattern piece that we're going to need to make the adjustment is the front pattern piece. So I've just focused here on it for you. And what you're going to need to do first is determine the fullest part of your abdomen. So the assumption here for me is that it's usually at the high hip line. I call this the high hip line. The high hip line is always halfway between the waist and the hip line. So if you just take this distance from the center front waist to the center front hip position and find the midway point, this is a really good place to make any sort of abdomen uh, adjustment. We're going to draw in a couple of slash lines to begin with as we always do. As soon as you have this high hip line and again assuming that this line is landing at the fullest part of the prominence of your tummy, this is where you're going to make the adjustment. And we're going to draw a line to the center line of the pant on that high hip line or abdomen line. And I'm going to draw a diagonal line then that goes from that point to the point of the waistline side seam intersection. And then we're going to have a third slash line that is going to go from the intersection there of those two slash lines just up to the waistline. You are going to have a pivot point here at the corner going to have a pivot point here at this upper portion here and we're going to slash open these lines. Okay so now you can see that I've slashed through these lines. Again I've slashed through from center front up to that lovely little corner there and I've also slashed down from the waistline to the intersection of all those points. Okay, so you're going to remember now that you took some measurements for your adjustment and you measured the distance that you needed to change the width of your pattern at center front and you also did an, a 
a measurement for how much you need to add in length. So you're going to use those measurements as a guideline when you make this move. The whole idea here is that you're going to take the amount you need to add in length and draw a parallel line to one of the slash lines that you have going horizontally across here like this. Now, whatever that number is, you're going to just pop up this top section. You want that opening to be parallel to each other. Now, whatever that measurement was, you're just gonna pop it up. Now you're gonna check what happened to the amount of width that you added. So the amount of width that you see being added is indicated here as well as here on this jog right here. So you wanna just check if it's anywhere close to what you ended up measuring on your pattern. Now, if it ended up being needing, you needing more width than what this allows, you can always separate your pattern here at this point, but make sure that you do keep this these two lines parallel to each other. You can definitely break this point here and shift this pattern piece over more if you need to accommodate the more uh, prominence that you have for the width of the pattern. So by all means, don't be afraid to do that. So one of the things that you're gonna ask me is what do you do now with this extra width that you have here at the waistline? Well, in some cases, if the prominence of your tummy is actually ending up higher as well as low, below this prominent, most prominent part of your tummy, you can actually just include this in your waist measurement. And this will give you added waist ease as well. Now, if you don't need that much ease, you can always create a dart with this. So you can see really quickly and easily here that you've added length and width to your front pattern piece. Now you'll see that I need to finish, of course, my pattern. So let's kind of close out these gaps. So let's assume that you want to leave the weight, the ease that you've created at the waist with this added. So you're just going to blend in those lines. It's probably gonna be a subtle curved shape. This is okay, it's what you need for your particular body. Now for this part of it, what you normally will do is simply create your center front line and slowly slope it back into about the hip line level. So it's gonna be sort of this um, slightly curved center front that you'll get scooping back into your front rise curve here. Now in some cases, you can definitely add a little bit to your hip. So in other words, if I wanted to add a little bit more to my hip, I'll end up just shortening the crotch extension, which usually if you have a tummy, you probably want to do anyway. So you have a couple of options there. So the first one is to curve it back into where the hip line position is because if you didn't want to add any more hip girth, you want to keep it there. I tend to like to add a little bit more to the hip girth here at the center front as well because what I find is that this will actually get rid of some of that excess fabric that you feel at the front crotch area. So it's definitely something that you can experiment with um, and decide on what you want to do. Okay, so let's take a look at this one again, and we're gonna just bring in the original block so that you can see what the difference is. So you can see here if I lay up the front pattern piece of the original pattern, you can see here automatically this is where we've added width and length to the pattern. So I'm just gonna shade that in for you so that you can see that very clearly. And you can see that this is all added width and length for the prominence of the tummy. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Don't forget to grab your copy of the scaled pant block pattern so that you can follow along with all the fitting tutorials coming your way. Next week, we'll discuss another very common contour fitting issue that you may be struggling with. I'll see you then. Bye for now.